we got through section 7.3, so we're going to get into section incredibly now. 7.4. And, and the only part I think of seven four that's really difficult is the rationalizing the denominator. Yes, that always uh, yes, that always trips people up is that rationalizing. Guys, um, the first part is exactly what we'd expect. So from 7.3, we'd have something like this. And of course, the whole point of 7.3 was you're allowed to multiply if roots are the same. We've been doing that forever. 7 times 3 is 21 because they both have the same root, namely no root. right? So I can multiply these because they have the same fourth root. That's the fourth root of 16. 16. I'm adding, I'm multiplying. And what's the fourth root of 16? 2. Why? I like it. Because it takes four twos to multiply to 16. 2, 2, 2, 2 is 16. All right. Cool. All right. Um, I see a little uh, note. I see this all the time. I saw this on the test from yesterday. Uh, some people have a problem like this, square root of uh, 63. How do you attack that problem? Can you do the square root of 63? If only with 64, it'd be great, but it's not. Too bad. Break it up. What can you try to do then? Break it up. Break it up. Right? And of course, I kind of jumped to it, but 9, I can take the square root of. So I want to break it up into something I can do and something I can't. Now, suddenly, somehow, the next step is this. All right, now those of you who did this, can you see why numbers cannot come out of a square root? In fact, nothing comes out of a square root. I do the square root, and it becomes a nice whole number, right? So that 7 definitely can't just pop out of there. What you really should do is square root of 9, square root of 7, square root of 9 is 3, and square root of 7, I don't know. Right, that's, I don't take anything out. I just do it to the part that I can do incredibly well. Right? All right, cool. So be careful about that. I see that enough to make me a little worried. Right, a little side note. So All right, that's you great. You put 9 minus 7, would it be 9 times? Oh, it's oh, a sorry. dot, right? Okay. Yeah, sorry. A dot kind of okay. <laughs> got smooshed. All right. um, so in 7 4, the first part of 7 4 should be old hat then. If I had um, cube root of, of what, Jeff? I don't know. 135 divided by cube root of 5. What are you allowed to do? I can divide them because they right. have the same root. So it's 7, 3, and 7, 4 are the same idea, really. I can multiply or divide if they have the same root. They could have made it one stupid section, but they made it two. Oh, well. 135 divided by 5 is 27. Keep root 27 is 3. Cool. I like it. So that first part is old news. To the same root, I'm allowed to multiply and divide. Right? The new part in 7.4 is something I said last time, and not a lot of people showed any recognition, but let me try this again. How many guys have heard of rationalizing the denominator? Three people. Okay, good. Four, maybe five. Um, so now everybody will have heard of this. Everybody who's here today, anyway. Um, the problem with, uh, in general, you can actually rationalize the, the top or the bottom, depending on the problem. What we always do just about is we rationalize the bottom because irrational numbers suck. Do you guys agree with me? Mm -hmm. I mean, 7 is nice. The square root of 7 ain't so nice, right? Because if I try to write it, it would take me forever. So what is even worse is if that square root of 7 is in the freaking denominator. Now I'm dividing by a freaky ass number. So the whole, the, the name rationalizing is actually come from taking an irrational bottom and trying to make it rational. Let me step back and make sure everybody's with me on my terminology. This is irrational because what? 
No. Because it can't be expressed no. as a fraction. Right. It can't be expressed as a fraction. I love it. Square root of 7 would be a uh, infinite sequence of decimal points where there's no <coughs> pattern, right? It's like pi. Right. Um, so to make it rational, I want to make it maybe a whole number, which is actually what we end up doing, uh, or a fraction. And if it was a fraction, I would just divide by the reciprocal. I want to make it a whole number on the bottom. Why can I not do the square root of 7 and make it nice? What does the square root need in it to be able to be done? Why can I do the square root of 9? Because 9 has two threes, right? Square roots look for two things. How many things do I have in there right now? One seven, so what's it missing? Another seven. So that's why I like the way I taught the earlier stuff. I'm trying to make it connect to the later stuff. I give it what it's missing. We've seen that a lot of times here, haven't we? What's this guy missing? Give it to him. What's this guy missing? Give it to him. So what's he missing? He's missing. Now, I can't just do this. Because can those go together? No. 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 So I've got to multiply by the root of what it's missing. It's got one seven. He needs one more seven to be able to be done. Why do I have to multiply the top two? Because I want to keep it legal. Right? Whatever you do to the bottom, I've got to do the top. Just like whatever you do to one side, you've got to do the other side. What do you get? On the top, I'll do the top. Square root of seven. Yay. On the bottom, you get seven. seven. Can I see that? You get the square root of 49, which is seven. So is the bottom rational now? Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, it's whole, but that's the type of rational. So beautiful, we rationalize the denominator. OK, freaky. The problem with this is everybody starts multiplying everything by itself. The only reason I multiplied by itself is because it's a square root. It needs one more of it, right? What if it was a cube root? What does a cube root need inside it? How many things? Three things. How many does it have right now? So how many more sevens does it need? It needs three total, so it needs two more. So what do I multiply then? Cube root. Uh, like I say, 7 squared or 49. Why? Do you guys get the idea? In fact, I don't call it, I don't like the name. I understand why they call it this, because that's what you're doing. But it's easy to lose track of what the hell this thing is. I like to call it completing the root. Yeah. It's a square root, and it's two, then I'm going to give it what it needs to be complete. Aw. Right? This one needs three things. It's only got one. I'm going to give it two more things to complete the root, to make there be three things inside of it. Does that make sense? OK, you don't have to answer. All right. Um, but I like to think about this. What is square root of 7? How could you rewrite square root of 7? 7 to the what power? Half. Half power. Half. So isn't this half of 7? Multiplicative. So if I multiply by another half of 7, I made a whole 7. This is 1 third of 7. If I multiply by 2 thirds of 7, I'm going to get a whole 7. So there's another way to look at it. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah, 7 to the 2 thirds, so right? Get seven out of that? Definitely. Let's try. What do you got on the top? Cube root of 7 squared is cube root of 49. What's 7 times 7 squared? 7 cubed. What does a cube root do to the cube? Uh -huh. It completes the, complete the root. Give the power inside to be the same as the root. Complete the root so that the root will cancel. So the only thing you're putting it out is the denominator. That's the one that comes out and in. The numerator always stays in. The numerator, yeah, just gets whatever the hell. It's like my <coughs> trash pile collection, right? The numerator just gets whatever I need to do to make the bottom work. Okay. Right? In later classes, there will be very specific situations where you have to do this process to the top. But those are weird-ass situations. Right? When you go to pre-calculus, which you're going to be doing a lot of, is you'll get an answer like this. You'll get uh, 2 over the square root of 3. That irks me as much as if you gave me an answer of 4 sixths. Why would I be irked if you gave me this answer? It's not reduced. It's not reduced. Why am I irked if you didn't give me this answer? Because it's not simplified. It's not rationalized. So it's the same. It's like here, I'm not done. It's the right answer, but I'm not done. Got to put it in the right form. Here, it's the right answer. I'm not done. I have to put it in the right form. Right? So what would I have to do to this to make it the right form? What's it missing? It's a square root, good. So it just needs one more three to make two. You can make the number three. No, you can't. Yes, you can. 
So on top you get 2 square root of 3. On the bottom you get 3. So what's considered, so for the, the denominator is always what makes it considered rationalized if the denominator has no square roots. That's what makes it rationalized? Yeah, because now 7 is a rational number, whereas square root of 7 was irrational. So if the numerator is dead, that's not considered rational. Then the t here the numerator is rationalized. In general, I want the denominator rationalized. In general? Yes. Okay. Cool. And it really is, I'm, I'm kind of not giving the full story here, but it really is basically because radicals are bad enough, why the hell would you want to divide by one, right? <laughs> Radicals are bad enough. Now it's a little better. Now it's like one seventh of square root of seven. It's not on the bottom, not dividing by a freaky ass number. Okay. Um, so what about this? Let me let me show you. I always go one step further than the book does. Um, So again, the numerator really doesn't bother. It's just going to collect whatever I have to do to the bottom. Because I have to do it to both the top and the bottom. Let's start with the W real quick. How many more W's does this need? One W. One more Y. It's a fifth root. It needs five things. It already has four W's, so it only needs one more W. I just want to get us started, right? That's why I like completing the root. Look at the root. Give it what it's missing. Now, does this need four more eights? No. What's eight already? Three. Two, two, two. Yeah, two, two, two. So it's, it's got three twos already, right? So how many more twos does it need? Two more two. Two more twos. One more W, like you told me, and then how many more Ys? Four more Ys. Cool. So it's all you gotta do is look at the root. How many does it have now? How many more does it need to make it the same as the root? Why is the top the same? Because if I do, if I multiply the bottom of a fraction by something, what do I have to do? Multiply the top by the same thing, or else I've changed it, right? So multiply top and bottom by this, because that's what the bottom needs. Now, who can tell me what would the bottom be? Two W Y. Two W. You built it to be that. But if you don't like just jumping straight there, what do you got? 2 cubed, 2 squared is 2, 5. 4 w, 1 w is w, 5. 1 and 4 y's is y, 5. Those all cancel. You've built it so that they'll cancel, right? And on the top, I just get what? Fifth root of? Find out. 4 a w, y, 4, right? Just collect all the crap on the top. That's worse than any problem you'll see in the book. Let me kind of summarize here what we got. <coughs> All right. Uh, so here, you guys try. <coughs>
Uh, the first one shouldn't be too evil there. What, what do I need to give it? What root? Cube root. So it needs one more three, because nine is already two threes. And these three things in it. So the top I get cube root six. And the bottom, of course, I get three. All right, cube root of three cubed would be three. Can you divide these? No. Why not? Because it's not six, it's cube root. I like it. They don't have the same root. Cool. Can't break six down into three whole number parts, so I can't really rewrite the cube root as a whole number. The cube root is six there, right? So that's as far as I can go. What about this guy? What do you guys, oh. Just real quick, would it be all right if we wrote it um, three squared? Yeah, that's perfect. And then just kind of start it from there. I like Simplify it. it and then I like it. it. So if you write it in exponential form, it's a little easier because you just want to make that exponent the same as this root. And actually, in general, you want to make that exponent a multiple of this root. Something three will go into evenly because then the root would go away. I like it. So what, what can I do first here? Can you guys see something I should do first thing? Divide. Yeah, I should divide. And in fact, you could divide cleverly here. So um, what happens with the numbers? What goes into both? Three. 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 Seven over Seven, 25. 25. How many X's are left? X. On the top, right? Seven. Now, the thing about the Y, I personally would not reduce the Y. Because what's my whole purpose here? To make the bottom not have a radical anymore, right? Is, can't I do the square root of y4 on the bottom? What's the square root of y to the fourth? Y, y, y squared. Y squared. If I reduce this, I get a y cubed here. And then it's missing a y. I have to give it a y that I just took away. It's kind of silly, right? So if you didn't see what I'm about to do, you can still get it. You just have to do a little extra work. I would leave that y there and that y4 there. Of course, I got. Um, I have everything there? Yeah. 25, that X canceled. There you go, cool. Because now what's the bottom? Five Y squared. Five Y What's the top? Yeah. Now if you didn't see that, if you did this, so that's the answer there. If you did this, if you did screw to seven X over 25 y cubed, right? If you reduce everything, which is kind of the other way to do this, um, I get the square root of seven x over five square root of y cubed. What's this missing to be able to be done? Two y. One more y, right? It's a square root, I want a multiple of two there, so I want to make it four, I'm gonna multiply that, and see how it's kind of like the y I canceled? And I gotta bring it back? But it would still work. You get square root of 7 xy at the top. The bottom, you get 5y squared, because 2 goes into 4 twice. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. So why would you take out the 5y and put it outside of the square root, since the, you're taking the 2 and putting it and using it with it? How do you mean? I'm sorry. I did take the 5y squared. I, I, again, I don't take anything out of a root. I do the root. So what is the square root of 25? <coughs> Five. See, it's not in the root anymore, is it? So you do take it out or you don't? Is it in the root? <coughs> is it inside a square root? It doesn't look like it. Good. So I took it out, but I didn't really take anything out. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of y4 is y squared, right? Okay. It's the problem because I split these up. Right. Because what am I taking the square root of, the top and the bottom? Okay. Cool. So you still leave it under the, on the denominator, but you just don't put a square root sign over it. Because I did the square root. Okay. And I'm glad you said that because I, I see this a lot. I see, um, I think I talked about this before. I still see this, I saw this on the test. I see people say this. Square root of 81 is not equal to the square root of 9. Right, because then when would it stop? Square root of 3, well, oh my god. Square root of 81 is 9. The square root did its job, it's no longer there. Right? 
Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. What about this here? Let me give you one last one here. making the problems where you had to rationalize the denominator, I made sure the bottom and, and the top had nothing in common. If they did, I would have reduced it. Sort of like we did to a point here. Reduce, <coughs> reduce. A little cleverness there, but oh well, even if I reduced it, I could still work it out. So can't I work with the top and the bottom together first? Reduce the amount of crap on the bottom? Maybe I end up with a problem that I don't have to rationalize at all because the bottom might go away. You guys see what I'm saying? So whenever they have a, in fact, this section doesn't say rationalize, it just says divide. Simplify where possible, blah, blah, blah. Right? So if I did, I, why, why am I allowed to divide those? Same. same root. So I'm allowed to put them all into one big root. And now it's one of your favorite problems. <laughs> this point, it shouldn't be that bad, right? What's the only one that really gives us problems is that being negative two, but what's that gonna do? It's just gonna go up. Become positive. So this part's <laughs> gonna go up. 64 divided by two is? A11 divided by A leaves you with 10 A's. And then the two come up with the 28 and make 30. Now that looks very familiar, hopefully. What is the fifth root of 32? Two. 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 Five goes into 10 twice. twice. Five goes into 30. Six. And done. Right? Don't attack that with rationalization first. That sucks. There's common things. Kill those common things first. Right? Okay. If you look back at the examples where we're rationalizing, <coughs> I was making sure that there was nothing common on the top and bottom. because I keep trying to reinforce this idea. People get really confused about, they give me like an answer like 6.4 because they divide 5 into 32. And you, and you can see why they do it because they make this big point about dividing that into the power there. This is not a 10. It signifies 10 A's. There is no 10 in there though, right? So it's going to act differently than that true number of 32 would act. Now I could rewrite 32. What is 32? If I break it all the way down, 4 times A, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So I get a 2 to the 5th power. power. So another reason why the 5th root of 32 is 2 is because 5 goes into 5 once. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. If I write my numbers in exponential form, they'll act the same way as the letters. Because then they'll be in the same form as the letters. What you doing? Is that cool? Yes. Yeah. What if the A had a ninth power? Yeah, what would happen if the A had a ninth power? It would be A and then. The nice thing is we do exactly what we just did. I just have a remainder, right? Right. 5th root of 32 is 2, like we just talked about. 5 goes into 9. 4. Once with 4 left, four left behind, right? And then 5 goes into 30, 6 times with none left behind. That would be it. So see how this one had two A's here? Because it wasn't missing an A? 
there were A5 and A5 inside. This had A5 and A4, so it only has one A and then the four extra A's over there. It didn't have enough A's to go all the way. Very strange phrase, but Um, okay. <coughs> All right. Let's do, uh, let's do a couple more sections. I want to give you guys several problems out of all those sections to try together. We'll take a break and we'll see how much further we can get. That's my plan. That I just came up with now. <laughs> Uh, 7.5, I actually had a problem from 7.5 on the practice test. It was a very simple problem. I'm hoping you guys saw how it worked. Uh, it was something like 5 radical 3 minus 2 radical 3, something like that. What would you hope the answer to this would be? Three, seven, three, seven, three, 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 and it is. That's the answer. Because if I got five of these minus two of these, I got three of these. Right? What is the square root of three? Can somebody tell me? What is the square root of three? Three to the one third, the two third power. Careful. What would be three to the one half power? It's still not telling me what it is. Just say, I can't tell you what it is, Jeff. I ain't got enough time. It's freaking long. So it's something I don't know, right? What is the square root of three? We don't know. So this should act the same way that this does. Five of something minus two of that thing is three of that thing. Right? So when you add or subtract, I don't care what the hell you're adding or subtracting, you need like terms. These are like terms. They're root threes. They're the same thing. Right? So the minute I make one of them like a five inside, they're not like terms. If I made it a cube root of three and a square root of three, they're not like terms. Right? It's very difficult to be like terms. Everything has to be the same. Um, so if I had seven <coughs> cube root of six minus six cube root of eight plus 2 cube root of 6. Okay, cool. So the like terms would be these guys. And what do you get there? 9, Nine cube root of 6. What can you do with this? Leave it alone? No. Oh. What's a cube root of 8? Actually, times 2. Times 2, right? Uh -huh. It's times because it is. I love that. It's six times this thing. What is this thing? Two. So it's six times two. So you get nine cube root of six minus twelve. Twelve. But don't make that negative three cube root of six because are these like terms? No. Hell no. Right. It's just like I got nine x minus twelve. Right. Same idea. How we doing so far? I mean that's nice. As long as the radicals are the same thing in the inside, the same index, you can put them together. Like terms. Will it stay that nice? You know the answer to that. What if I have this here? The correct answer is not put it in the calculator to get a decimal answer. So I still have a few people give me decimal answers when I say a to the negative five thirds. I get some decimal. No, don't be decimal crap. My calculator gets the points. They're not. Are they like terms? I can't make this seven cube root of one hundred seventy-five, but I, I get that answer all the time. I can't add them unless they're like terms. What can I do the cube root for? Break it down. Break it down. Yeah. So forty is. I love it because I can do the cube root of eight. And we just did this one. I don't know if you guys remember. If you pay close attention, if you can break one of them up successfully, it actually gives you a clue as to how to break the other one up. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I want to have a five left over, so it will be like terms. So if you get some big ass ugly number and you get a small nice little number, do the small nice number and then try whatever you got there, try to see if it goes into the big ass ugly number. Right? It's a nice little hint within the problem. What is this then? What do I get here? Uh, I like it. So 2 times 2 times cube root of 5. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. All right. 
You cool with this? So let me write it all the way out. That's the same thing, right? Because I'm taking the cube root of 8 and the cube root of 5. What's the operation here? That's a plus. What's the operation here? Everything is doing what? Multiply. 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 So what is the cube root of 8? Two. Two. 2. Times 2. Awesome. And over here, what is the cube root of 27? 3. 3 times 5. 15. 19. 19 what? Cube root of 5. I like it. 19 cube root of 5. Get over there. So the coefficient, it multiplies by whatever I'm able to do the root of, right? Because that's what it says. Two times this thing. This thing is two, so it's four. Five times this thing, this thing is three, so five is three, fifteen. So the coefficient just always multiplies by the piece I'm able to do. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe. Is there a way in the calculator to type in to find out what the um, square roots are of like a really big number? Sure. Like if it is they cube. won't come out nice all the time. I mean a cube root. Sure. Um, there is a cube root button on your graphing calculator. Don't look, it's not on the face of it. It's under the math button. So if I'm you, I know I'm a big geek. But if I just got that stupid TI graphing calculator, it's not stupid. <laughs> I see a math button on the damn thing. I'm going to hit that damn button and see what happens. And I, we've already talked a little bit about the math button. I can't remember why we went in there. It was the fruit. <coughs> That's right. Hit that math button. It's the third one down or something, maybe. It's got a cube root button in it. But even if you didn't know that existed, how could I do like the cube root of 89,417.2? How could I do that if I didn't know there was a cube root button? How can I rewrite this? 89,417.2 to the one third power. Well, you don't need these parentheses, but. If you put it in exactly like this, it'll do it. So you can do any like fifth root, it'd be to the one fifth power. If you don't put those parentheses around, it'll do that to the first power and then divide that by three because it knows order operations. You've got to put that in parentheses, right? Or if you got the brand new calculator, ooh, you don't need that. I'm a little bitter, that's all right. want to buy it off me? No. I'm going to teach you. How they kind of money. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see you. Alright, how are you guys doing? Decent so far. So if they're like terms already, you just put them together. It's awesome. If they're not like terms, you, re you try to reduce them. Try to simplify the radicals and see if you end up with like terms. Um, here, what about this one? This one's nice. No, Jeff. Like that one. So it should be incredibly obvious that they're not like terms. There ain't no way you can subtract them right now. What can you do with each one of them, though? What could you do here? Yeah, can I do anything with the 3? No. Hell no. But 2 goes into 3 for the x, 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. Right? 2 goes into, there's a little 2 there. If you want to put a little 2 there, don't. <laughs> you thought I was going to say go ahead, but no. Square root 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. So it's already looking a little better, right? So that stupid 12, but of course what can I do with that 12? <laughs> And the square root of 4 is 2, and the 3x gets left inside. So have I made them like terms? Yes, square root of 3x, square root of 3x. They're like terms to a point. I know there's a 4x there. But I can do this. And that's all you can do. You could like factor out the common square root of 3x. And believe it or not, that's what we always do. 
Um, what's 7x plus 2x? Well, factor out an x, and what do you get? 7. And 7 plus 2 is 9. So I'm really doing the same thing. I just got to this level, and I wasn't able to put them together. Right? So it's the same thing, yeah. On that one, can you put 4x minus 2 in front of the cube root of 3x? Sure, you could. Yeah. And does it need the parentheses? Definitely, because otherwise it would look like, if I did like this, it would look like that's only with this. When okay. the whole thing uh, should be. Double check. Okay. Yeah. Would you also be able to factor out a 2 and make it. Two yeah, you could factor 2 out, sure. But it's not really a factor problem, it's a, it's a combining like terms problem. But if you took a 2 out, that'd be fine. Okay. Maybe. Because it says 3x cubed over there, and what happened to the other x? So again, if I look at this by itself, isn't that x squared times x? Yes. And what's the square root of x squared? X plus. And that square root of x I can't do, right? So that's why I got an x square root of x. Okay. And the 3, of course, just stayed inside because I can't do anything with that. So don't forget, there's a 2 there. 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left. That awesome little shortcut works all the time. You won't get too many of them with the variables on the inside. They're going to mostly be numbers, but a few of them will have variables on the inside. Um, what's your gut? I always love this question because I always get creative answers, but what's your gut tell you about uh, this problem here? In the opposite direction. Right. <laughs> the answer I normally get, this isn't that bad really though. I mean, what's the property I'm going to use? Distribute. Yeah, distribute. Yeah. Now, a real quick word. What would I do on this problem here? Because everybody gets tripped up about the two and any coefficients. But what do I do? What, what would this be? Now, you automatically didn't care about the two because the x can't go with the two, right? It goes with the other x. But everybody trips up about that stupid two. What's the square root of five go with? Seven. What can it go seven. with? The square root of seven. Root. So what's this? Two square root of thirty-five. Right. Root. Same idea there, except I got a few numbers in there. Minus root. square root of fifteen. And can I do anything with either of those? Nope. No. It's not two square root of twenty. Are they like terms? Nope. No. And you already know what they're made of: a five and a seven and a five and a three. Those, that can't be broken down. So that's it, that's all you do right there? Bam. Silly. Right. Exactly what you expect, because it looks like a distribution prop. Distribution. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a, just, is what is in that? Uh, I'm surprised nobody's asked me, what are you drinking, Joe? <laughs> it looks like tea. Mm. It looks like tea, yes. All right. Or <laughs> no, it is. maybe whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not at that point where whiskey gets me through class. That would suck. That would suck. suck. I've had teachers like that, though, with the little coffee mug, and you can see the waviness over it. And <laughs> smelling. Oh, my God. Really? Um, so what do you think about this here? Here, do this one here. You guys do this one.
bad. Should be. When you multiply these together, obviously we're foiling. I heard somebody say foil. Yes. Um, what do you get there? One oh, I get, okay, so 20 square root of 49. And I know you don't have to do that, really. Um, little side note, can anybody tell me what the square root of 4.19 times the square root of 4.19? What is that? 4.19. 4.19. So a shortcut to that is square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. Right, half a seven, and the half a seven makes a whole seven. So it's a nice little shortcut. If you don't like that, just go ahead and write it down. The next step, you can make it seven. Right. Keep going. What do you get here? Sixteen square root of thirty-five. I like it. Cool. So the only thing you can really do anything with. It's, it's the first one. That's 20 times 7, which is 140. 140. And I know not even to waste any time on those, because I saw the numbers that went into them. There's 1, 3, and 1, 7 in there, so there's not 2 of anything. I know I can't reduce any of them, because I'm the one that built them up by doing the problem, right? Don't even waste time on these. You know what went into them, you know it's not going to do anything. Any like terms? No. So I hate it when people get this line, it's right, and then they keep going. I'm like, damn. There's no like terms. There's nothing else to do. Hmm? It's too long? <laughs> but it's sort of like, remember, I could have something like this, x plus y times z minus w. Are there going to be any like terms when I multiply that out? So I'm going to have four terms, just like over there. i got four terms because I had no like terms. Watch this, it's kind of cool. Um, can somebody predict what kind of number I might get here before we actually do it? What kind of number? Negative. Uh, more specifically, it's going to be rational, whole, integer, complex. Yeah, it's going to be an integer. It could be negative. The reason that is because when I do this times this and this times this, there's not going to be any radical left, right? The only place there could be radical is the middle term, but what's the middle term do? Cancels they, out. Yeah, it cancels out. Okay. It's like a difference of squares look to it, right? So the square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. two. two. Minus 5 root 14 plus 5 root 14 cancels. Minus 25 times 7. seven. Cool. So you got 2 minus 175? Minus 175. So here's, now, realize what we just did. What kind of number is this? That's a completely freaking irrational number, right? And I multiplied it by another completely freaking irrational number and ended up with a nice energy, a nice rational number, right? You guys kind of with me here? Because it looked like a difference of squares, so the middle term cancels. So all your radicals go away. Where did we have a situation just a few minutes ago where I wanted to get rid of all the radicals somewhere? I wanted the radicals to go away. Rationalize the denominator. Rationalize the denominator. So if I have a problem like, I'm trying to connect these two dots here for you. If I have a problem like this, And I have to rationalize the denominator. It's not enough to multiply by square root of 2, is it? Because then that's still there. It's not enough to multiply by square root of 3, because then that's still there. We square root of 6 now, right? You've got to multiply by both somehow at once, but make sure the middle terms go away. You have to multiply by its kind of like difference of squares pair. And it's called conjugates. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. Conjugate pairs, right? So if I multiply by root 2 plus root 3, If it was just root 2, you multiply by root 2, right? To make the bottom become a whole 2. If it was just root 3, multiply by root 3. It's both, so shit, i got to multiply by both. But I put an opposite sign to make sure the extra radicals go away. So that's called conjugates. Brings me back to my French class days. Conjugate your, conjugate your verbs. 
So on the top, you just get 2 radical 2 plus 2 radical 3. Is that cool? Just distribute the 2. On the bottom, what am I going to get? 2. Square root of 6, negative square root of plus square root of 6 cancels. Minus 3. So you get 2 radical 2 plus 2 radical 3 over negative 1. And a slightly better way to write that would be negative, negative divide two. both of those. Yeah, negative 2 radical 2 minus 2 radical 3. So if you have more than one radical term on the bottom, and you have to rationalize it, you multiply by what is called as conjugate. It's difference of squares pair to make sure the middle term goes away. I guess, how many, term, how many of you guys have heard of conjugates before in this context? Okay, a little more, a few more than have heard of rationalizing, which is interesting. What you heard of rationalizing, you just didn't know. Didn't want to let me know? Yeah. Right. Don't tell. Here, you guys try this one. Uh, So what do I multiply this by? Six plus. I like it. Cool. So on the bottom we get thirty-six minus, minus six radical five plus six radical five cancels. Minus five. Five. Cool. I like it. So we're going to get our nice whole number down there. On the top I get. Twelve root seven plus two square root of thirty-five. Two square root of thirty-five plus thirty plus thirty plus five root five. I like it. Any like terms in here? No. So I just get the whole thing. Two square root seven. Two square root of five. Thirty. So you couldn't break down the thirty-five to make it a seven and a five. You could, but then what would you do with that? Would it cancel out with a 12-7? No, because you still wouldn't have another square root of 7. You'd have 12 square root of 7s, and you have 2 square root of 7 square root of 5s. 
Oh, it's not two spy. It's two seven and five, not two seven two five. There's no. If you broke uh, this down, is it two square to seven square to five? Isn't that? Oh, I there's no it. plus sign in there, of course, because it's all multiplication, right? What's thirty-five? Seven times five. Yeah. So there's no plus sign that the two would cross through. You know, you can't. You can't make this suddenly by itself, so it can go with that. You can't tear it away from this guy. Okay. Desperately trying to keep your attention because I want to do one more section to let you guys do some group work before we take a break. That's my, that's still my plan. Good God, how many weeks are left? Two. I already did the math. Oh, impressive. Swear. <laughs> 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 advanced math. Oh, let's see. You did the math in that class. One last section. In this section, we've already done this section. Believe it or not. And you don't believe it because it's got radicals inside of equations, but we've done this equation so many times. Um, remind me, what do we do with this that some of you guys didn't do on the test? What do you do with it first? Add the 7 first, right? Isolate the absolute value. So what do you think I would do if I had this? Yeah, and this is what I started saying the other day because I forgot we hadn't gotten this far yet, but this is where I sound like I'm teaching government class for a future uh, tyrannical dictatorship. Isolate the radical element. Right? Isolate the radical. Isolate the thing that has your variable stuck in it. So you want to add that 7 first. And then can somebody tell me what a good idea for what to do next would be? Square both sides. Because that square root is keeping you from accessing this stuff. And you want to be able to move stuff around so you can get your x by itself. So kill the square root. And what kills the square root? Square. So here these die. And then what do you get over there? 225. And now it's easy. All right now it's nice. So you get 4x equals 230. x equals 57. Yeah, OK. But just reduces even better. Right. So this will be 115 over 2, which would be 57.5. Now, one thing about radical equations. Um, let me show you an example of, of what's going on here. So if I had, um, all right, what would you do first there? Same thing, right? Same. Move the two over. What do you do next? Square. Square. Right, how we doing? Right. Isolate the radical piece. Square it to kill the square root. You get that, right? And that's the wrong answer. Yeah, I like it. That's completely the wrong answer. And it's fine. You did the work beautifully. It's just that with radical equations, you must check your answer. Because what happens when you square both sides of an equation? If one side is negative, it is now positive. So when you square both sides, and we have to square. We have to kill the square root. So math says, all right, I know you have to do it, but I'm going to give you shit answers if that square root, if, that, if squaring killed what used to be negative. Because if you try to check this, plug a negative 2 in. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 plus 2 is not 1. 
right? If it was negative 1 plus 2, that would be 1, right? So when we squared, we lost that negative. It became a positive 1. So a math gave me an answer to this equation, not to this equation. You have to check your answers for radical equations to make sure that they're not incorrect. So this one, what's the answer then? No solution. No solution. I almost said the, the official word for this kind of answer is an extraneous solution. What? I just like the first five letters, extra solution. It's an extra one. It just doesn't work. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, these equations don't get much worse than that. I mean, it's the same idea we've seen so many times already in this class. Um, what would you do on this one? Same stupid thing, right? I get the radical by itself first. And then cube, cube both sides. Cube. This is a cube, cube root. Cube. The opposite of cube root is cube. 2x minus 1 equals 64. Cool. Check it, it'll work. What? With odd roots, you don't have the same problems because when you cube something, it stays the same sign. Think about that. What's negative 2 cubed? Negative 2, negative 2 is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. <laughs> so with the cube roots and the fifth roots or whatever, you really don't have to check that. You can just check it to make sure it works, to make sure you did the work right. It's the even roots that always have the problems, right? They're more uptight. Odd roots are laid back. They can handle it. All right, so let me not pile more stuff on you yet. Let's do a little group work, and then we'll take a break. Um, page something. Page 607. Mm -hmm.